Following the last home theater builder talking about speakers, I think it makes sense to talk about subwoofers next. Subwoofers and bass are one of the most impactful elements of a home theater space, as it's the only real element that hits you in two dimensions. You hear it, and you feel it. Good, tight, fast, responsive bass empowers your content to a whole new level. In my space, I made a fairly specific bass slash subwoofer choice based on what I bought and how my subs are installed. I talked in my speaker video about my killer deal on the Focal Electra 1038BE towers, and I ended up buying subs from the same dealer from which I purchased the Electras. He sold me two RELF S5 SHO subs. The RELs go pretty low, but they are most known for their speed, in their integration with high-end towers using a special high and low level combination style connection. The main recommendation I can give and what I for sure intended in my room from the start was to go for two subwoofers. If you have a room of any kind of decent size and speaker count that gets up to a full array of bed and immersive locations, two subs is really a minimum sweet spot. Buy more sure if you want them and you can afford them and fit them into your room. But by going with at least two, you're getting offset integrating sound, offset integrating bass that can really help level out the low frequency response of your room, kill nulls, and just all around balance the bass better within your space. Many receivers and processors at the premium or better level as well have outputs or two outputs, room correction, and so on. It's all designed around dual subwoofer use as well. So there's a whole lot out there about subwoofer positioning, crawls, and which brands to buy. So I'll just say that most likely offsetting or opposing positions in your room is a baseline ideal in most spaces, or at least a good place to start. And there are plenty of great brands to choose from with just a little bit of shopping. Although many times SVS feels like the golden one for a lot of folks. I wanted my subs to go low for sure for a movie thumping theater experience but I didn't need to go cracking the walls of my basement foundation. What sold me on the RELs is the reputation of fast response and accurate bass. To me personally, I saw that as being a matter of precision over brute force and a point of attraction to my like general technical values, I would say. But I can't say that I've been disappointed in any way with the RELs. There's plenty of extension that we can hear in our room and feel, but not muddy or overwhelming, particularly after we acoustically treated the room and I'll dedicate a specific video to that coming up. I have opted to keep both of my subs up front with the main speakers, and while some might shake their heads at me for this, I've done it for two reasons. One, the room itself sounds great to me, as is, and aesthetically and physically, it just fits better to have both of them up front as they are. I might gain something better if I moved one sub to an opposing back wall, but not actually having tried it and being pretty happy and content with what I hear, I'm not sweating any likely minor delta improvement that might exist if I were to move one of the subs. Two, RHEL would ideally not have you just connecting the subs with regular 80 Hz crossover base management, but instead they go for an entirely different type of connection. These RELs come with a special cable called a Nutrix Speak On Connector. It goes to a special high level input port on the back of the sub itself and is meant to bare wire connect either to the speaker or amplifier terminals of your main left and right channel speakers. You also additionally connect a regular LFE channel or low level input connection from the processor to the sub as well. Through some then special processor or receiver configuration and adjustments made on the back of the rails, you achieve a higher level of symbiosis in your sound and bass, directly integrating high end towers with the rail subs. This connectivity and integration is a reason to keep the towers and the subwoofers in direct adjacency to one another, as they essentially function as a single full range speaker together in unison. This type of subwoofer connection is an interesting element of audio video that I had never really seen or heard of before. And I did spend a while with the system connected using the speak ons and using the combined high and low level connections. But for a bit lately now, I've had the speak on cable removed and I've just been running the rails as you would a normal sub with only the LFE subwoofer connection, all my speakers set to small, and crossover set in my Marantz preamp. I do cross all of my surround and height channels, the full cal arias, over at the generally used 80 hertz. But the Electra Center, I go a little bit lower at 60. And the big towers, I do cross them over at 40, letting them drive lower and getting more out of them. Their plus and minus 3 dB response is rated down into the low 30s. 
I can't say honestly that I have heard much difference in my system using the special rail connectivity versus just the more traditional option. My hypothesis is that Route advertises and builds their connectivity more for music, where you wouldn't have surround speakers, you would have two big towers, but you still want to add bass extension to that two-channel experience. It allows the subwoofer to provide full bass extension that a tower speaker alone might not in a two-channel setup, more so than for home theater style use. My uses, though, are really entirely based for movies and games. To that end, dialing in the rail connectivity is actually kind of tricky, and even their own information and videos on the subject are actually very confusing and hard to follow, with a lot of conflicting details on what settings you want and what settings mean in different receivers or processor models and so on. I almost just feel better using the subs in the more traditional way, as it keeps any FUD out of my mind that things aren't working the right way with all the high-level stuff. But that all said, I still think they sound great, low enough, fast and accurate, had they been available when I bought the S5s though, I may have opted for a couple of HT1508 Predators from Rel instead, more of a home theater defined subwoofer. And at some point, maybe I'll just sell these Rels to a music lover and side grade myself over to, again, a home theater specific line. We'll see. The other thing I wish these subs had though was XLR connections. There's only RCA and I prefer using the XLR connections off of my preamp for all of the channels possible particularly for longer cable runs, which you need to reach the subs in the other room. Oh well though, I doubt that's another difference that I can actually hear in real practice. So that subs, a very touchy subject in my experience that people can kind of get nuts about, and to me go really overboard with quite quickly, but it's up to you and it depends what kind of experience you want to make for your room. So, plenty more content coming. If you have any questions, please post in the comments and like and subscribe for more. Thanks.